Hello, and welcome to another Industry Careers for PhDs podcast brought to you by Cheeky Scientist. I'm your host, Isaiah Henkel, and today we'll, we'll be talking with Michelle Gillimard. Uh, she is the president of the Australian Medical Writers Association, and we will be talking with her specifically on medical copywriting and careers in medical copywriting. Uh, if you are interested in getting access to the full interview, uh, go to cheekyscientist.com backslash association. Uh, you can learn about becoming an associate and having full access to all the interviews and joining us for the interviews live as well. And if you want these podcasts, uh, which are the highlights of the interviews delivered to your email inbox, you can go to cheekyscientist.com and email subscribe uh, to have them delivered to your inbox. And finally, you can download these podcasts on iTunes as well. Uh, so Michelle, uh, again, is the president of the Australian Medical Writers Association, and she contributes to the European Medical Writers Association Journal and conducts medical writing training workshops for healthcare brands and businesses. Uh, Michelle is also the founder of Health, the Health Writer Hub, an online education portal for health professionals and aspiring writers looking to improve their health and medical writing skills. Uh, Michelle's specialty is writing courses and resources. And she's produced a lot of these courses and resources and has helped thousands of medical writers from around the world, medical copywriters as well, to enhance their skills and develop their writing careers. So we, go, we are going to jump right in now with Michelle. Thanks for coming on, Michelle. Well, thanks so much for having me on to speak, Laura. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here today to talk about medical copywriting. Wonderful. All right, so we'll, we'll get started. So let's start with the very basics, but for those who are just coming into, um, coming out of the academic setting and they're wondering uh, what is medical copywriting, from a very basic point of view, what, what does that entail? Well, copywriting is a form of writing that involves creating compelling and engaging messages for targeted audiences. So it's essentially the art and science of writing in order to persuade your readers to take an action. This action or purpose could be to buy, sign up, subscribe, click, read, share, like, comment, or it could simply be about educating your readers and building brand loyalty with engaging content. So when we talk about medical copywriting, we're talking about selling and promoting products and services in the health and medical industries to targeted audiences. And these audiences can be consumers and patients, as well as physicians and health professionals. Now, medical copywriting is an ideal career choice for people with a science background who are keen to involve themselves in the exciting and I guess fast paced world of advertising and marketing. It's for people who are keen to step away from their academic careers and try something a bit more creative and challenging. As a medical copywriter, you're still effectively a scientist and you're also extremely valued and respected for your critical thinking ability. So I guess that's a bit about medical copywriting and, and, an, and an introduction to the field in a way. All right, and, and in terms of the day-to-day -day activities of someone doing medical copywriting, what, what would their daily tasks look like? Well, as a medical copywriter, you can work as a freelancer or an employed copywriter, but you'll essentially be doing the same type of writing work, whether you, you're working for yourself or not. But as a freelancer, your day-to-day -day work also involves running your business as well as writing. So that means you'll need to consider all the other tasks involved in running a freelance copywriting business, like marketing, ongoing admin, accounting, and client liaison. Uh, as an employed medical writer, it's more straightforward. In a sense, you don't have to worry about the logistics of running a business. I mean, in terms of the work itself, you're often given writing projects to work on along with a clear brief and then you'll complete the projects usually in conjunction with a team of other creatives. The work you do as a medical copywriter is really quite diverse. You could be writing ads, video scripts, brochures, leaflets, newsletters, articles, blogs, website pages, sales pages, letters, product labels, e-detailers, posters and even more. So the projects vary tremendously, but you'll always be given guidelines and instructions on the format and key requirements. You might also be involved in writing marketing materials for physicians to support things like a product launch or ongoing education for drugs and devices. Okay, and so in terms of uh, the positions that are available under this umbrella, what's what types of companies would you work for um, if someone was looking to get into this type of role and they wanted to 
to network to get to you know their foot in the door with a particular company where, where should they start to look what types of companies would they be looking for yeah well this is a great question because there really are so many opportunities in this growing field and in terms of who you can work for the scope extends to virtually any healthcare brand or business. So everyone from drug companies to hospitals to government organisations to even solo health professionals. I mean, these days all businesses need content and marketing. And by hiring a writer with specialty skills in science and medicine, companies are getting a better value and quality of work than if they hired a general copywriter. And something else to think about is that you can also work for companies outside of the health, medical and science industries who still might want a specialist scientist to write their content. For example, insurance companies or banks who want to create specialty content for perhaps a blog or a newsletter, but they want it written by a highly regarded and qualified professional. Now, in terms of getting your foot in the door, agencies are a great place to start when you're looking for medical copywriting work. There are general digital agencies as well as specific healthcare agencies. And uh, depending on the type of clients these agencies work with, some will require writers with PhDs and, and health qualifications as well as writing or journalism experience, while other agencies might look more to your past medical copywriting experience or any short courses you've done as, a, as opposed to looking for a specific writing degree or diploma. Now, when you're employed, there are often junior, mid and senior levels to apply for. And these really depend on your professional copywriting experience in terms of the level that you're aspiring to. But something else to consider is that these days, most writing related roles do involve forms of copywriting. And because of this, companies tend to use slightly different terms to advertise their roles. So they might not specifically use the term copywriter and instead they'll use terms like writer, content writer, healthcare copywriter, medical writer or content manager, but you can quickly get a sense of whether these roles involve copywriting as such by reading the job descriptions and thinking about the type of work involved. So it's a good idea to use related terms if you're doing a job search to understand the field so you can get an idea of the scope of the industry. That's a really good point um, because uh We've got so many clients who um, often come to us looking for what, what types of positions are available out there for them and, and it's important for them to know what to search for into Google, what sort of terms, so, so that's really helpful. Um, and uh, it's good to know that once you drill down into the, you know, the tasks of that job, you can um, start to build an idea of what that particular company might be looking for for their particular role and that will change company to company somewhat. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of variety and, and companies tend to have their own objectives and overall sort of aims and ambitions for their copywriters. So there really is a huge diversity and there's no kind of one parallel way to get there. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so keep that in mind team when you're looking for jobs within this area. Um, and what uh, if if someone was looking for work in this area? What what could they? What would be the requirements of the role, and what sort of experience could they put forward from their experience as that you know that would stand out to a potential employer? Yeah. Well, firstly and and most importantly, becoming a great copywriter is about developing your creative and persuasive writing skills, and this is best done with you know, reading, practice and, and feedback and reading and practice and feedback. You can't become a writer unless you write all the time because it's like any skill, it needs to be honed and developed and practiced. Uh, you can also take short courses in writing and copywriting too and I do teach a few of these in this area which um, was mentioned earlier. But um, some medical advertising and communications agencies will only hire medical copywriters with a degree in a relevant discipline or a PhD or a degree in the life sciences. And most hiring companies do tend to have their own requirements though. So it's a good idea to research the types of companies you think you might want to work for because this helps you to get a sense of what they're looking for and if you actually do need to undergo further training or if it's just going to be about 
honing your writing skills and, and getting it and becoming a confident writer. Having said that though, most agencies will want some previous writing experience or they'll want to see an example of any similar writing work you've done in the past. You can gain an entry level copywriting role without writing qualifications, but you'll need a portfolio or some practical examples to demonstrate that you can write well in the medical copywriting style. So don't show examples of, of academic writing when you're applying for copywriting roles, in other words. Now with any type of writing work, the person hiring you wants reassurance that you can actually write well. And this is best shown with relevant examples of past work. So try and find examples that are in a similar topic as well as being in a similar style. Your writing doesn't have to have been published before. So you can write your own samples and tasks and don't worry about whether they've actually been used by a client or an employer or have been published. Uh, and if you're seriously thinking about becoming a copywriter, I do recommend you think about the type of copywriting you want to do and then have samples that, so that you can support this particular style or type of writing. So thinking about whether you want to write for a lay audience or physicians or whether you want to work in pharma or, or supplement writing or more kind of government health writing or marketing health products. So just thinking about where you feel you sit within the overall industry. That's a good point um, that you raised about not having had your writing published anywhere that you know that means that anyone can do a sample of writing on any particular topic and they can just sort of pick a pick a target audience and possibly write something for one of the companies that are already known in the field oh Absolutely. You, yeah i mean i think people kind of get hung up on whether their work has been published or someone has has used it and but I as someone who hires writers all I'm looking for is whether they can actually do the job or not I don't really mind if their work has been published or not it's, it's about their ability so when you're getting started write your own samples uh, get, show these to other people for feedback that helps you to practice as well and get constructive criticism on your writing and you can even think about doing something like starting a blog because that will get you writing and, and practicing that skill as well yeah, that's a good point, writing a blog. Um, and and certainly if you went onto one of the freelancer platforms and um, got some got a little bit of experience there, I'm sure it wouldn't hurt either. But that, but that is definitely good to know. If you don't need to have it have had it published, then essentially you can create your own work and, and provide your own experience rather than having to have worked through it which is quite unique to this role and we don't see that often in other roles unless the skills you can go out and specifically learn. So that's something that is um, very self-determined in a way. So that's uh, good to know. Uh, okay, so if you were someone who is looking for a job in this role, you know, building on what you just said, they've, they've created some samples of their writing. Uh, and they want to go out and work in this field, what, what would be their strategy? What would you think would be the best way forward with that? Well, the first thing I advise all aspiring medical copywriters to do is to take some time and consider the type of copywriting work you think you want to do or what you think you'd enjoy doing, as well as the type of work you think you'd be best at. Because when we talk about copywriting, there's many different forms of writing under this umbrella term. There's the more creative advertising and marketing campaign work, which can involve not a lot of writing at all, but a lot of creative thinking. And then there's blogging, website copywriting, article copywriting, and those forms tend to be more straightforward and require less of that sort of very, very creative thinking. So take some time to explore the field, learn more about the different types and styles and, and work out where you think you'd be most and least comfortable. And when you have a sense of that, then I recommend you consider the types of clients and companies you'd like to work for, as well as whether you want to be freelance or employed. So in the health and medical industries, there are a lot of opportunities, but for various reasons, then you might not want to work with certain types of companies. Uh, perhaps they might not align with your beliefs or personal philosophies. So thinking about all these things helps you to become clear on what you want to do, who you want to work for, and, and the services you could offer, as well as how you can grow your career and, and who you can work for in the long term. 
doing this also helps you to find a niche because if you can be a medical copywriter with a specialty focus area, this is going to be really beneficial for you in terms of opportunities and future career development. So once you have an idea of the type of work you want to do and who you want to work for, then I suppose you can think about finding work. And these steps involve positioning yourself as a writer for hire, whether that's updating your LinkedIn or telling people that you're now looking for work in this field, uh, developing a portfolio of relevant work, preparing your CV, preparing a website, and thinking about your short and long-term career goals. That's good, that's good. And um, in terms of when you're uh, sort of getting started with, with any field, um, it's really important to, to have a strategy. And so to know beforehand what, what you're going to plan out, it, it, you know, what you're going to be doing, it's, much, it's going to be much more successful than if you were just tr trickle forward uh, what Isaiah refers to is trickle forward goal setting. So, um, you know, just setting a goal after you achieve one next uh, step of the way. So having that strategy planned out is really important uh, in terms of getting that job over the line and, and being strategic because it will help you to stand out as a candidate from the other others uh, other candidates around you who are applying for the same job. So that's, that's an important so I'm glad we went through that. Um, in terms of actually working in the field, what are some of the nuances of working in the field and some of the rules and regulations that medical writers do need to follow? Are there particular guidelines that are available? Or, or yeah, um, this is a, no. it's a really good and very important question because there are lots of I suppose, you know, nuisances in this field and, it, and it's not as straightforward as perhaps other industries are. I mean, firstly, it's really important for all medical copywriters to be aware of their local advertising and marketing guidelines. So you need to know what can and can't be said. And sometimes in this industry, you can feel like you cannot say anything, which can be frustrating and, and you need to find ways to deal with this. Uh, if you're involved in the marketing of drugs, supplements or physician services, the regulations are extremely strict and they vary from country to country. So I can't advise specifically that in Australia we've got advertising guidelines for marketing therapeutic uh, goods and services and we also have a, a, a code of conduct called the Medicines Australia Code of Conduct and so I always tell people to find these regulations, find these codes, find these guidebooks, print them out, highlight the relevant points so you're always aware so that everything you write is compliant. Uh, something else to be aware of is your use of language. So in copywriting, there are certain words known as power words, and these are more persuasive and they're thought to increase conversions. But in the health and medical industries, many of these words can be completely misleading and even non-compliant if they're used in the wrong context or if they're even used at all. And also as a medical copywriter, you need to know how to turn complex scientific information into easily understandable content for a lay person without losing any of that original scientific meaning. And that's not an easy thing to do either. You need to get inside the head of your ideal reader and give them what they want and not what you think they need. And that can also be tricky as well. And finally, a, a point that I wanna bring up is that you need to uh, often need to edit or adapt your content to suit a small space or a word limitation or perhaps a specific design. And this can be challenging too because you can't always say what you want in the way you want to say it. So you need to be flexible and, and open to change and, and working with other people to achieve this, I suppose. That's, that's great information. And in terms, of, in terms of this particular job, because it's you know, copywriting itself and, and it needs to be persuasive, I suspect that uh, one of the skills you, you need to have is the ability to influence or certainly embedded somewhat in your personality or, or need to feel like you want to influence others. Um, but in terms of other transferable skills or some of the technical skills, I know we briefly, we talked on that, but can you expand on what other skills are relevant to the role? Yeah, absolutely. So as a medical copywriter, you need to have a medical and scientific knowledge, obviously, as well as those creative and persuasive writing skills. But beyond that, you also need to be able to work autonomously, think critically, and very importantly, you need to think outside the box in terms of utilizing those key persuasion tactics to write compelling content. 
Uh, you need to have great research skills so you can be confident that you understand a new topic or a new therapeutic area or, or a new sort of subject matter before you start writing. And you also need to be able to work efficiently, manage your time appropriately and get on with things without dwelling on perhaps negative feedback or constructive criticism. Uh, and as I sort of mentioned a bit earlier, you need to adapt your ideas because the end result is often going to be a collaboration with designers, project managers and strategists. It's not going to be just your words. They'll often get edited, changed, adapted to suit the, the end product, whether that's a brochure or a newsletter or a product label. But on that note, you also need to be able to defend your ideas. For example, why you chose certain words and and very importantly, the consequence of editing those words, if you feel strongly that they shouldn't be changed because changing them changes the overall meaning or impression of the content. And uh, any complementary skills you can offer like graphic design, web editing and social media management can also be really beneficial. That's a great point. Um, okay. And uh, in terms of the job application process, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question sort of around this as well, because uh, as you mentioned earlier, there's two parts of this. You have to decide if you're going to be a freelancer or apply to a company. Yep. But in terms of the job application process, if you're applying for a company, what what does that look like? And then I'll branch out into how you go about being a freelancer. Sure. Well, when you're applying for a for full-time employed work, you'll need to submit a relevant CV and, and you'll probably be asked in for a couple of interviews. And it's very likely that you'll be asked to complete some specialty writing tasks in the process as well. So you need to be prepared for this option. Uh, and I always recommend tailoring your CV to suit the specific role rather than sending a generic CV. So if you're applying for a medical copywriting role with an agency specialising in a particular health topic or therapeutic area, make sure you highlight any relevant experience and achievements that are related to this topic because the more tailored your approach is, the better chance you'll have a success. That's brilliant. Okay, and in terms of the the freelancer aspect of that, I've had a, a lot of our clients ask, you know, that they have contacted a company and they uh, have not been offered the job as the full-time uh, role but they have been offered something part-time or freelance by a company and then they get a little stumped on how do they go about creating their hourly rate and what sort of charge should they put forward. I know this will definitely differ between countries but is there a particular strategy you would use to go about figuring out that hourly rate or, or what you would quote? Well, I guess I always recommend people quote on a project basis rather than an hourly rate because you can show, I suppose, how you split up the project in terms of the hours you spend on not just writing but background research, uh, proofreading, editing, email communications, uh, phone calls, uh, all these things that freelancers forget to charge for. Uh, and then once you can show that you've broken down your project rate and, and that's how it's come together, then the client also thinks they're getting really good value too. So they're probably going to be more likely to agree to your rate than if you just give them an, a, an hourly rate or a project rate with no explanation of how you got there. In terms of working out your hourly rate, this is something that uh, you, I suppose you can adapt depending on lots of different factors like uh, how well you, how if you really need the job or if you're really busy and you don't particularly need it or if you want to take it for the experience or you can start with a high rate and negotiate uh, rates and, and projects are often negotiation. Uh, you might give one rate, they might say no, but would you think about this? Uh, there's other strategies you can use as well, like if, if they're coming to you and saying, can you write, say, a certain amount of articles rather than a particular project, then you can offer discounts for upfront payment or ongoing work. So you can kind of turn it into a longer term project as well. So uh, as a freelancer, finding clients and work comes down to many factors. And I suppose marketing, word of mouth and networking to find new opportunities are really important as well. But when you find those opportunities, actually securing them is, is can often be harder than finding them. Um, 
often clients source quotes from several sources, so it's up to you to win the job. And you can do this through competitive pricing, but also things like communication and, and your etiquette, build, building rapport, demonstrating value, like I explained with those project rates, uh, thinking about the relationship as a long-term relationship and also showing examples of why you're the best person of the job because you've done relevant work in the past or any work that you can use to support your um, pitch, I suppose. That's very helpful. Thank you for answering that, Mike. I know that that will be very helpful to a number of... Um, in terms of... Uh, when, when a, we sort of talked about the, the very start of the career, but, but what, what does a career project trajectory look like for a medical writer? Yeah, well, there's lots of flexibility in terms of career paths for medical copywriters. Uh, you can develop your writing skills to become, say, a more senior writer in a company, or if you're freelance, you can continue to increase your rates through the value offered in your experience services and, and articulate this, I suppose, through uh, the fact that you're charging a certain amount because you have all this specialty experience. If you're interested in, say, consulting and strategy, you can aspire to become some, something like a content strategist, editor, or a manager. And in these roles, you'd be making creative strategic decisions as opposed to writing all of the content. As a freelancer, though, as your reputation and, and confidence grow, you can take on bigger projects and also get other writers to subcontract or work for you. So that might mean that your role may not be to write everything, but the subcontractors write and then you'll check or edit their work and then act as that liaison between the client and, and them. And as long as you're completely transparent about the fact that you have subcontractors and, and that that's your process, that's absolutely fine. And I know a lot of writers who do that. You could also aspire to build a full service business. So you'd be hiring other writers as well as related contractors like web designers and graphic designers. And then you could offer complete content services for medical brands and businesses. And as a freelancer or as, a, as an employed writer, you could also be a consultant or offer consulting work. So again, you'd be working in more of a strategic advisor role rather than completing all of the writing yourself. Um, something else important to consider as well is that 10 years ago, most, or even five years ago, most of the writing styles copywriters specialize in today didn't even exist. So things like blogs, e-newsletters, social media posts, iPad detailers, they all emerged very recently. So keeping up with the latest technologies is really crucial. And if you can do this, then you'll be putting yourself in the best position to grow and learn and develop your career and take advantage of all the future opportunities that do come your way. No, oh, that's that's a good point. So yeah, definitely keeping up with that social social media, all those hours on social media may not have uh, <laughs> been uh, to waste. Uh, but in terms of uh, the types of people that would enjoy the sub role, uh, what, one thing that we do try to do with our clients is not only help them to find out what they do want to do in industry, you know, after the academic setting, um, but to know what they definitely don't want to do, and this really helps them to be a little bit more focused on which jobs are are right for them and uh, and through that it helps them to have a much more successful transition they're not sort of second guessing every step that they take uh, so one of the important questions is what types of people would not enjoy working in this type of field yes it's a very good question and it's true that copywriting does not suit all personality types Thank you for joining us for another Industry Careers for PhDs podcast. If you're interested in attending one of these interviews live, or if you're interested in getting access to the full interview, including all of the background materials and show notes, go to cheekyscientist.com backslash association and learn how to become a associate. Uh, you can get on the wait list for the next association enrollment period there and learn full details about the program. It's a program specifically designed to help PhDs transition uh, into top industry positions. If you would like to see receive more of these interview highlights uh, via our podcast uh, sent directly to your email, go to cheekyscientist.com and email subscribe under where it says start here. If you haven't already, you can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. Um, until next week, remember your value as a PhD 
and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.